Good morning everybody and thanks for joining me and I really want to thank all the subscribers and the people that viewed the the garden show video thank you for watching and I'm glad you've been enjoying it today we are going to um, take the kaiki off the mother plant because uh, I think it's been there long enough, so I've got a pot ready for that. We are going to take a, cut a spike off another orchid and look at how the straw supported the broken limb of that orchid and a few other little things. So we're going to get onto it, but first we have a little bit of an emergency. I checked, I checked the uh, video station before. I came on and noticed there was a help. So maybe if I can't help this person, somebody else can. So I'm going to read the problem and say what I think. So help. Uh, seems like one of my orchids may not be happy. First, let me say over the past month or so, it has and continues sending out new aerial roots from the main stem. So that is a very good sign. Okay, I came to notice two of its leaves are turning a very dark purple. But then it says after the purple, purple black color around the extreme edges of the leaves. These leaves seemed to be okay before, but were never 100% firm, but uh, were healthy enough to send out the aerial roots. Any idea, advice as to what this is and how to remedy? I water my orchids weekly by soaking them in water with a little fertilizer about 10 minutes and drain. They are also on a window with a southern exposure so they get plenty of light. This particular orchid was originally given to me in a pot loaded with pat moss and no air holes. So immediately I repotted it with orchid bark. Thanks. Okay. Now, um... Let's hope it's the good and not the bad. So let's talk about what the good could be. The good could be, um, it's the black color I don't like, but the purple. You see, some orchids leaves do go because of the color of the orchid, like uh, this. This is uh, deep purple. She has been in bloom since the middle of December and has now sent out a beautiful nether flowers. So, but what we notice about her leaves, if I can get this, is there is darkness on all the edges. Let's go this way. On all the edges is a dark purple. Now, she gets more light. And if you have an orchid, and some, some orchids tend to to do that, uh, she always had because she's always gotten lots of light, and she's always in the brighter part of the window. Her leaves always have some purple, but they are firm, and uh, the the fact that the leaves haven't always aren't weren't originally very firm. This, this happens a lot when they've been sitting in the moss too long because what happens is they're sitting in that moss and the roots, the roots that are compacted in the center part, they've tried to absorb so much water they can no longer do their job anymore. They're not getting any air and they're stuck in the center compacted and they can't pick up any more water and get it to the plant because either that center part has become so dry water doesn't get to it or it's always soaking, soaking wet and it can't do its job because they do need to dry off a little bit in between. So um, it's good that you repot it to bark 
Now, I would, this is what I would do. Um, I would just unpot it and look at it. See how it looks. See how the roots look. Um, if there's any that have dried up, since you put it in bark, I would uh, pull the outside and leave the dry center core. I would clean it all up. See how it looks because sometimes, and this could be the bad part, it, and I went through this, I started off with a little black, round, soft, right in the core of the stem. And it just grew and grew and hollowed, and then it was a fungus rot from originally being in too much moss. And we're going to hope that's not what it is. And it is a good sign that you have all these aerial roots, and I would make sure I misted them once or twice a day and put them in your most humid location. But I would check the inside of your pot. And if anybody else has any other ideas for you, um, maybe they'll leave a little note under your comment or just in a new comment. So anyway, I hope you have good luck with it because I know it's worrisome. And uh, we're going to move on. <clears throat> so. Um, this is Moon Glow. She's my second oldest orchid, and of course, this is her kaiki. And uh, I would have soaked the kaiki previously, but I wanted to cut it off in front of you. She's even trying to, to still sprout flowers, but uh, they've been in bloom since the middle of December, and I think it's time she came off and let the mother plant gather more strength. She's also trying to send out more flowers, but I noticed one of them has started to wilt because, um, and so I always take, when I see a wilted one, I always trim it off because it will send ethylene gas to the others. It's not a lot, but I don't like to leave it. I want as many in bloom as I can get. So uh, anyway, for now, I'm going to cut off the keiki from the stem and from the spike that's coming out of it. So um, I cleaned my snippers. So I have these and I also have a box of razor blades that I pick up at the dollar store. And so, I mean, we're just going to get right to it. So, um, I'm going to leave about an inch. So, here it comes. <laughs> now I have to unclip the stem from the support. So here we are. Here she is. Because she will dry out quicker because she doesn't have any, these are all aerial roots. So I would like to see her start to form some nice new roots. And this one's pretty long. So, um, now, we'll just put that there for a minute. I'm going to get a blade out. That one is not a new one. We, oh, there we go. Okay, so now, okay, what do I notice? I notice, and now, see if you can get, I can get this. There's a little bit of scale down in on this, down in on this spike, right in, right in there. I see a little bit of scale. So I'm going to clean that off with some, I don't want to cut real close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go probably to right above the first monoponial stem. I'll be, be pretend that's the median. I'll probably take a slant. I don't want to cut my finger off. So I'll cut sideways and there we go. So now, now let's see if we can get that. Now, yeah, there's definitely some scale. So what I'll do, I'll so pick the stem up. Oop. Off the floor. I'm always dropping something on the floor. And a little bit of a 
maybe a Q-tip will be best to reach in there. So I have um, I have some 70% isoful alcohol, and I'm going to pour a little bit in there. I notice every once in a while I do wipe scale off. Um, the only one that really gets it is Deep Purple. She often gets it. And there's a couple ones that are growing leaves right now I keep my eye on. But better to catch it when it's just a little bit of scale than when it's too late. So because I'm leaving that stem on there. There, now I can show you. There's the scale. So I'll go again on the other side. And I'm just cleaning right in there, right in there with the alcohol. I don't want any left at all. I'm not worried about it. It's something that you see every once in a while. And you can also check the backs of the leaves and quite often near the edges. And you can wipe them with a little makeup pad with some isoful alcohol and this one's all nice and clean now. So here we go. I'm just going to move mommy away. And I picked up a flower pot. It had a couple cracks. We were down at the thrift store in Salmon Arm. And it um, was 25 cents. And I put a little black paint on a couple of the spots that were not looking good and there we go so I pre-soaked all this bark 24 hours and I'm putting her in her own pot because um, there's no room in the other one so all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little crater and because these are aerial roots they're used to being in the air so they're going to be um, just lightly covered by bark and they can break real easy because if I pre-soaked it not so much but um, like I say the stem wouldn't bend I sort of tried it so I've, I've got them pretty well tucked in there oops I forgot the cinnamon we don't want to do that we want to put a little bit of cinnamon on to stop anything from both the mother and this one, wherever you trim. So there we do. You don't want to get this built anywhere else. You don't want it on the aerial roots. It'll dry them out. You only want to put it exactly where you need it. So <laughs> I, it's, I think it's a full moon tonight. So we're doing moon glow on... Uh, <laughs> A full moon day. So there we go. We're going to just put her in like that. I picked out some of the smaller pieces of bark because I do use larger size pieces of bark. And I picked out some of the smaller ones. And I thought she'll just anchor quite nicely in there. And she's going to go on the top of my nursing station because she get she got oh oh oh. oh. She'll get lots of humidity, and we'll wait for some roots to grow. So that was our first little project today, and I will mist. I love misting aerial roots, and I quite often after breakfast, that's my little thing. I go turn all the humidifiers on, I give everything a little mist. So here she is, and now I'm going to take her to the nursing station. There we go. This is the orchid I repotted at the garden show. It hasn't lost its blooms. In fact, there's a little bit of a surprise I'll show you. So this is where the baby's going to go. And that, of course, is my tea light holder and just a dish set in the middle of my bowl. And I use it a lot. I really like it when there's an orchid that I'm keeping my eye on. So <clears throat> we're good there and I'm going to put, now we better finish off with the mother. Now um, 
I'm going to take this stem and I'm going to cut it above the first node. Well, probably not much different than it is. So um, I usually go to the first node above the media and on a slant I do a cut. So I just freshen that up and I'm going to put a little cinnamon on it. Now there's a very old dry stem here. I'm going to take that one off. That's completely dry. Some people don't take their spikes off until, until they've dried up. But I want the energy now to go to the mother. And I will also remove this little weepy flower. Because there's more coming. And it's been since December. There we are. And I like to keep them trimmed. So now... She's ready. She can go back in her spot. This is Moon Glow. And uh, we'll see what exciting thing happens next. Apparently there's some uh, types of orchids that will grow keikis um, easier because of the type of orchid they are. But these were all from the grocery store. So I don't know a special name because I named them all myself. So... Uh, some people use cakey paste to try and get them. I've never used it. Um, I just let nature take its course. And if I'm going to be blessed with one, then I'll be very happy. So that is that part. Now, I'll show you. This is the one I repotted at the garden show. It has a beautiful amount of aerial roots still coming. It has firm leaves, hasn't hurt it at all. I've been watering it one as 10 minutes soaking in the sink every Monday. This is my watering day lately. And halfway through the week, I take my watering can and give it a dribble. So that's what it's been getting, but you can see right here. Um, there's a little flower spout coming out of this node. And... There's another one coming out of this note. Now I thought I saw them before I repotted it and it hasn't hurt it any. So this will take a, um, it'll be going back into the window. Seems quite okay. So now my two slipper orchids. Everybody's wondering. They still are okay. This is the one I dropped on the floor. It's doing good. And um, I've been doing the same water schedule. I've been doing a soak, uh, not maybe five minutes for this. And then halfway through the week, I give it a little more water. And I've been misting the surface every morning. So... Seeing I had dropped it on the floor, I did repot it, and then I decided, Jack drilled some holes in this little pot, and I decided to repot this one too. Now, out of garage sale the other day, see if I can show you, if you see right here, <laughs> am I getting it? Yeah, there we go. This is a mister. And if you don't have a lot of room or you don't have room for a, for a bowl, these work. And it had a little, um, uh, when you took this off, there was a thing in here to put perfume on, and I don't like perfume on, so I tucked that out and it works way better. It doesn't last as long as the bowls, but sometimes at night I'll just put it on and only leave that one going. Okay. Next project. Okay, here we have something interesting. Okay, I named this one Lasting Sunset. And this is the one that uh, had a fall. And one stem had broke right off. And this one had broke almost right off and I put a slit piece of straw on it. But I have decided it's trying to grow a new leaf. It's still 
see if I can get that in there. It's still got flowers. And like the person who sent the question, the leaves are pretty good, but they're not firm and hard. They may never go firm and hard again. Sometimes they'll get a little bit better. But once they they're at that state, um, and all the new leaves will, it's not horrible, but it's not nice and firm and like I like. So I've decided for the good of the plant to cut off this spike. So we're going to take another razor blade and I'm going to go right down to the bottom node where it comes out of the plant and I'm going to go about a half an inch above the bottom node and I'm going to slice sideways. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. I'm going to take these out. And of course the name tie, my little butterfly. You can go, <laughs> well, we'll put you on after. Okay, so here we are with the straw around the broken stem. And you can see that um, it's still trying to send out some flowers. Um, but up here, it's lost some flowers. It had a broken spike. And I decided it was time to put the energy back to the plant. So next year, boy, will it be beautiful here because there will be lots in bloom. Okay, there is where it was broke. And do you know, being inside that straw, this was broke right in. You can see it went uh, halfway through. And this is the straw. And I had just slid it down. It was a plastic straw. And I had just slid it down and put it over it. And isn't that it healed up itself. And uh, it still kept flower all this time since December. So this is one that I've decided I'll probably put these in a little vase after. And I decided to let the plant gather its energy back. I'll put a little bit of cinnamon on right where I cut. Right there. And wipe it off where I got it where I didn't want it. There we go. Okay, tomorrow's watering day. So uh, they're on the dry side, but like I say, uh, get uh, find out your what works best for you and the only way to really find out what is going on in that pot if you think well maybe it's not dry enough or wet enough is just before your watering day check if you take out all the bark or half the bark it, it won't matter too much if they're in bark once they get established in bark Going from bark to bark again isn't going to bother them at all. It is more of a stress on the plant. They've been in stress. They're in a stressful situation being packed in that moss already. And it has affected your plant. So how badly it's affected, it may not be noticeable right away. So we want to get all the right things going first. So, um... Because of our humidity, this watering looks, works good for me. And I think that bark can work for everybody once the watering schedule is established. And the only way to really find that out is by checking. Go halfway down. If, it's, if they're still damp, you don't need to water again. But if it's dry all the way through the pot, then you can, you know, halfway through your watering schedule week, is give them, you know, a quarter cup or something, just with a watering can, but do the real soap once a week. So um, that's all I've got for today. Have a happy Easter, everybody. And uh, thank you again for all the wonderful comments and the people that Jack and I have got to meet this way and uh, uh, share the love, okay? Bye for now.